Hi everyone, in this series of videos we'll be looking at audio in vMix. Now if you're new, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the first videos in these series that covered the basics of audio. Today we're going to go over the audio settings that are available in your vMix inputs. Now as we've mentioned before, each input that has audio will have separate audio settings in the audio mixer of vMix. So let's head there now. Now to adjust the audio settings of an input, just click the little gear icon right here. Now you can also adjust these settings by going into the input and then clicking audio settings. It'll open up the same screen. Alright, so let's just go back into the settings again. So as you can see up the top here, we have the format section. Now this is just going to display the current audio format that your input is using. Underneath that you'll see channel. The channel section is for old audio interfaces that use a stereo input to bring in two microphones and then convert them to two mono microphones. If you select a separate mono from the drop down, you'll then see the two options. So I'll show you here. And there we go. They've appeared now underneath it. Underneath that, you'll see the gain section. So this allows you to adjust the gain or automatically control the gain in decibels. If you don't really know what this is, um, then I wouldn't worry about playing around with it right now. Now the delay underneath it, that's probably the most important section if you're just starting out with audio and live video. The audio delay allows you to sync your audio and video together. For example, we're using an 80 millisecond delay here because we're using a USB uh, interface. Now using USB means that your audio will actually arrive to vMix quicker than your camera will. So you need to set a delay to your audio so it matches up with your camera coming through. Now depending on what sort of camera you're using, maybe using an IP stream or something that's got quite a lot of latency, you'll need to set your um, audio um, to match that latency. If you're using embedded audio, for example, from a camera, if you've got an, a microphone built into it, uh, then you shouldn't need to set a delay because the audio and video are being embedded together and they will arrive at the same time. However, I would definitely just check your camera to see if you need to make any sync changes to it. A lot of people ask us, wait a minute, I can set a negative delay here? Well, this is actually only going to work for video files only and not live sources because unfortunately we don't have a flux capacitor just yet and we can't go back in time. So if you do want to make changes to it, you can just select here and change the, uh, the amount of time that you want to set your delay for, or use this here and reset it. So if you're using a USB microphone, there's actually another setting here as well called device volume. And the device volume section only works for USB microphones and it actually allows vMix to control the device volume before it gets to vMix, so on the actual device. Um, so this will only appear if you're using a USB microphone like the one I have to my left. So now we'll go back to our normal settings and we'll move to our left here. Now these are the levels associated with your input's audio. The pre on the left hand side measures the levels before any of the processing and filtering is done in vMix. The post is after it's processed in vMix. So pre is the raw audio that's coming into vMix before any changes are made. Now DBFS stands for decibel full scale. Zero is the absolute maximum without clipping. So if you're constantly hitting zero, then you probably want to look at lowering the volume of the source so it's not clipping. Okay, so now we're just going to move to the left-hand menu. Now vMix actually allows you to add VST3 plugins um, that are installed on your computer to an input's audio. You can use the plugins on your live audio inputs and also your master audio output. This is really helpful for adding professional level audio features to your live stream. Now keep in mind that vMix supports VST3 64-bit plugins, not VST or VST2. Now there's a lot of reasons for that. Now we do have a longer video talking about VST3 and how to use them um, and I'll link that in the description below. So if you want to add a new um, plugin, you just need to go to the plus button here and then select the plugin that you want to use. Now we're using a Waves plugin here, so you select the Waves driver, and then any Waves plugins that we have, we can select from the drop-down menu here. Now when you have a VST3 plugin, typically there's an installer that comes with it, um, and it will be installed to a particular folder, which I'll link down here. Now it has to be a .vst3 file. If it's not, then it's not a VST3 plugin. 
Okay, so now we've got our plugin selected, we can just click OK. Now on this screen, we've got the editor for our VST3 plugin, so it allows us to make changes to it. Um, and places like Waves allow you to save your settings, so you can load them up later on as well. So to close down the editor, just click the X button. Um, and as you can see here, this uh, tick box is now ticked saying that our VST3 plugin is on. If I want to turn it off, I can just untick it there. If I ever want to bring up the editor again, I can just click Show Editor and I can make my changes again to the editor screen. Now in vMix, in the shortcut section, you can actually set up a shortcut to turn on and off the VST3 plugin. So uh, we did a, sh a live show where we, we just used an effect for a short period of time and we can use that to turn it on and off just with the press of a keyboard or using a MIDI or an X keys or something like that. Now, as I mentioned before, you can add the plugin to an input. You can do it to your master audio. It's entirely up to you. Now, keep in mind, uh, vMix only supports VST3 64-bit plugins. Now, you can add multiple ones here as well if you wanted to. Should probably turn that off. Now, vMix has a couple of basic features for audio that you can choose to enable, including an equalizer here. You can tick the top box to enable the equalizer and make adjustments to it. Um, we also have a compressor section, so if we go to compressor, we can click enable compressor to turn that on. So you just need to adjust the settings here. Um, the compressor will kick in uh, if you specify a ratio that's you know greater than one to one. Um, and the threshold as well can be set to specify a sound level for compression. So any audio above the threshold will be compressed and the volume will be reduced um, according to the ratio that you've set above it. Now it's probably best to talk to somebody or check out Google for the best compression settings um, for you to use. Now the inbuilt noise gate is a handy way to reduce noise on an audio input such as a microphone. Uh, it works by quickly fading out the audio when it drops below a certain decibel threshold. Now it's good for cutting out uh, background noise or that type of thing. However, keep in mind that aggressively cutting out the noise will make the audio sound pretty weird. Now a lot of the settings that you can change in vMix here, like the EQ, compressor and noise gate, can actually be adjusted via a plugin as well. So using a VST3 plugin will probably be a, a more professional way to set these. However, you can use the inbuilt ones in vMix as well. Okay, so underneath the noise gate, we have a channel mixer. The channel mixer can be used to set the volume level of individual audio channels. An independent audio meter is also available for each channel here. Now underneath that we have the channel matrix. Now unfortunately this has nothing to do with spoon bending, red pills, blue pills or neo. Uh, it's used for embedded audio that has multiple channels. You can choose to route audio channels from here to different buses and outputs in vMix. For example, if I had a talkback channel that I didn't want to appear on my main external stream, I could mute it and only make it available via the headphones. Another example might be to create two additional audio mixes on bus A and bus B. Maybe I want to send out via NDI a different language on my audio or something like that that's coming in via a particular channel. So I can use this matrix here to set that kind of thing up. Hi everyone, Timmy from the future. I just wanted to add a little note here just to say that the audio matrix really is for advanced users only. Typically you just need to use the audio outputs if you want to change how your audio is routed. Now we're going to go through audio outputs on the next video. Typically the audio matrix will be used if you've got a lot of different channels coming in and want to route them. So the following example is a really simple example on how to use the audio matrix but you'd probably not use it in this situation. You just use the audio outputs. Now back to your regular programming. So I'm going to show you a really quick example on how to set that up. So for example, if I only wanted my microphone here, my two channels, to go out via bus B, for example. So I've got a, a secondary bus set up and I only want my microphone to appear that and not on my master. What I would do would change, take away all of these abilities here for the different um, outputs and just leave my bus B. So this is going to cut out my microphone. You should be able to see the master turn off as well because I'm going to switch my microphone from going from my master to all my other buses and just use bus B. Okay, so now it's back again. So if I wanted to, like I said, just route this via a particular audio output or my headphones, I can use this matrix here to send that out. Now I'll link a help guide in the description below as well if you want to find out more information on this. Again, these are very advanced features that most people won't ever need to use. Um, so 
If you're not quite sure about a lot of these and you probably don't need to use them, if you do have experience with audio, you're probably going to understand how most of this stuff works. So as we kind of covered with this channel matrix here, you can use vMix to route your audio to different areas. So like just your headphones or to different buses. Now we're going to show you how to do audio routing and audio output in the next video. So in order to do that, we're just going to show you quickly. So in the settings here, the audio output section is where you manage all this audio routing. 